Tough as a dump truck and nearly as big, these Goliaths are the worst thing on two legs since the Tyrannosaurus Rex. And that is going to seem like the perfect way to start out this video. The demons of hell exist in a hierarchy, much like that of a functional society. Well actually since they're demons, let's just call it a food chain. But near the top, serving as the royal guards, exists one type of demon in particular who is considered a one demon army. This particular demon is going to be the goat man we all know and despise, the Baron of Hell. What makes this particular demon such a curse to meet on the battlefield? Glad you asked. Let's jump into the lore and morphology and find out why even the Doomslayer should be careful around these guys. First things first, let me start by saying humans have been writing about this particular creature and books and stories pretty much in general for about a millennia. We refer to them as the Minotaur, but the moral of the story is these creatures were seen as bloodthirsty monsters ripping apart humans with ferocity and savagery reserved only for wild animals. So the generalized thinking is take a Minotaur and make it about five times worse and that'll give you the Baron of Hell. A Baron of Hell is going to stand upwards of 14 and a half to 15 feet tall which is going to work out to roughly 4.41 to 4.57 meters tall. This is going to be an absolute Goliath of a demon. The Doomslayer stands at around 6 feet or 1.82 meters tall so this thing is going to stand roughly about 2.5 times the height of the Doomslayer. But what is height without weight? Well basically a revenant but the Baron is actually going to be ridiculously muscular. Take a Hell Knight and give it about 100 tubs of protein a day and that leaves you with this behemoth. This being the case, it's actually kind of difficult to place its weight. However, considering its height and size, I could theorize that the legs are going to be around 250 pounds a piece, the arms around 200. And with a heavily muscular abdomen and thoracic area, it could easily clear 500 pounds, probably going to be somewhere closer to 700 pounds. The head itself could weigh upwards of 100 pounds due to the weight of the horns. So I would put this thing easily with in a range of 2,000 to 2,500 pounds or 907 to 1,133 kilograms. Basically, it's going to weigh as much as a dump truck. The Baron is going to be covered in head to toe or hoof in muscle that is going to provide damage protection and an unreal amount of power. Literally able to rip humans apart with ease and even the Doom Slayer, this means that this is going to be a demon that you should not trifle with. I mean, honestly, I am at the end of my ability to really explain exactly how strong this thing is. Is. So here's a video of a machine towing a rocket known as a crawler. Contained within the Baron's body is about this amount of strength to put it into perspective. However, what is truly going to be the most devastating attack of the Baron? Before covering that, let's run through its morphology and get a feel for what we're dealing with. Sticking true to its classic depiction of a demon, we will start with the hooves. The Baron of Hell is going to contain hooves much like that of a goat, which is how humans have long envisioned demons, and is also why we may view goats as a symbol of the devil, because let's be real. I mean, looking at this thing, you probably wouldn't know the difference between the devil and the baron. Moving past the hooves, we get to the legs of the creature. The legs in older games were going to sport brown fur and would almost be much like pants. However, in Doom 2016, the fur appears to have been lost and replaced with just tan skin. Now, this brownish skin is going to stop at the pelvic region, however, you can see that I would have to say the skin has pretty much been stretched and it's also turned pink as you can see the muscle kind of breaking through the brown skin on its legs. However, for the most part, this brown skin is going to stop at the pelvic region and transfer over into pink skin. The top portion of the legs are going to have natural armor plating that jut over the pelvis and off to the sides. This is going to connect with the armor plating that is going to come down the sides of the obliques and this is going to protect the Baron of Hell from any attacks that might come from its sides. The legs are going to be shaped much like that of other demons, like the Hell Knight for instance, in a digital to grade structure. If you can believe it, the legs are going to be much thicker than that of the Hell Knights as well. In fact, here is a size comparison of the Baron of Hell and a Hell Knight. Really, this thing is going to make the Hell Knight look like an imp. This is what kind of beast a Baron is. Anyhow, so the legs are going to clearly be heavily muscular with dense bones providing stable anchor points for the actual muscle itself. I don't know why I got caught up on this, but the patellas alone on the Baron are really defined and are more than likely larger than your entire face. Not sure why that strikes me as strange, but I just thought it was pretty interesting. Moving up the frame, we come to the abdomen of the creature. The skin has turned pink in the area and is devoid of any hair or tan coloring. Large abdominal muscles come to a peak much like that of the Hell Knight. However, it is definitely going to be much more muscle and much more armor plating. Now, it is completely possible that this is some form of armor plating as it appears to grow over the skin in the area and the muscles
also appears to be underneath the plating. So as I said, much like that of the Hell Knight, they're going to share a lot of similarities between each other, but obviously they're going to share some striking differences as well. Heading up to the pectoral and shoulder region, we can see the armor plating exhibited much more clearly. It definitely appears to sit on top of this muscle. Judging by its ability to move, however, it would seem that it's really going to be comparable to heavy leather than a chitinous material. This will provide better protection from incoming gunfire and absorb impacts and disperse them much better than brittle chitin. Going down the arms, the pink skin continues and the heavy leather material ceases around the anterior deltoid region. The biceps and triceps are going to once again be swole goals and what everyone should strive to achieve. The forearms are going to be quite massive, appearing about the same size as the upper arm, meaning that the gripping power of the Baron would be otherworldly. Coming to the hands, we see a devastatingly powerful attack weapon. First, the hands are going to contain quite a bit of muscle in them, aiding in the gripping strength. There are three fingers and one opposable thumb, but where it really matters is going to be its claws. Judging by the overall height of the creature and comparing that to the size of the claws, they're going to be about, I would say, 12 inches long or roughly 30.5 centimeters long. That can easily pierce armor, slice off a limb, and I would honestly say cut you in half. So in summation, this is going to be the guy that Freddy Krueger has nightmares about. What's worse is a Baron is going going to know this. It will slash in combat and for the most part can one hit kill most enemies it comes across. The Baron of Hell also has two other attacks that it can use and are going to be absolutely devastating if they do hit you as a normal human being. The first one is it is going to throw focused Argent energy which is going to be green rather than the imp energy which is going to be red so it can be assumed it's probably going to be more energetic. Anyhow it will throw this at you and if it hits you it will do massive damage to you. That's a lot of damage. That's the other way is it will take this energy and then slam the ground much like a Hell Knight does which will send out a shockwave damaging anything and everything around it. These two attacks coupled with each other and it getting close enough to slash you with claws can make really short work of you if you aren't paying attention. The back of the creature is quite strange as you can see where the connection points are made to the erector muscles on either side of the spine. However the spine itself appears to be lacking very much muscle or armoring. It is plain to see by the size of the spine that the bones are going to be quite large and reinforce on the barons. This seems like a major oversight however and could be considered a weak point on the creature. However it's not really going to be exploited as nobody would probably be able to get close enough to even damage the baron's spine let alone ripping it out. And then of course we come to the most interesting part of this creature, the head. The head is what everyone would imagine when they close their eyes and are told to think of demons. The mouth is going to be a jagged mess of teeth containing no lips so it's literally smiling all the time. These teeth aren't really used in combat, but I imagine if it came down to it, it could easily bite off a limb. Interesting, the structure of the jaw has a bony protrusion of sorts bisecting the chin area into what looks like many horns, and given the horns on its head, these really could inflict damage by producing slashing and stabbing wounds should anything get underneath its chin, sort of like a secondary attack point. Further up sits a pair of eyes that are beady and green. They are going to be green due to the argent energy coursing through the entire body, but also perhaps perhaps because of its blood, which we will get to momentarily. Above the eyes is a connection point for two forward-facing horns. They continue into the skull of the Baron, and two distinctive humps can be seen over its bald head. These horns can be used in offensive attacks as it will run and smash into enemies. That much force hitting one area would cause a demon or human to be impaled or just completely blown apart, basically dead. So just getting back to the blood for a moment, in the original Doom games when you would kill a Baron of Hell, they actually had green blood blood and green organs. Now there is one way to explain why it did turn out green rather than the normal red, as in 20, Doom 2016 has red blood, but just for like this cool side fact I suppose, there actually is a way to get green blood. Somebody recently had it happen to them and it's one of their medications they were taking actually had sulfur atoms fused with the hemoglobin in their blood, changing it from red to green. So I don't know if you guys know this or not, but sulfur is kind of always associated with demons and one of the things that could be happening in hell is they have a high exposure to sulfur atoms, thus turning the Baron of Hell's blood green. Kind of a cool side fact, however, the issue is in Doom 2016, as we can see when you cut a Baron's legs off with a chainsaw, all the blood is going to be red. So the question remains, how do you bring this thing down, and how does it game end you? Well, in terrible ways, of course. But then again, concerning the Doom Slayer and his ways that he ends the Baron, it isn't so great for them either. The way a Baron of Hell will take you out is quite a quick one. Upon knocking 
the Doom Slayer down, it will bring its massive hoof down on your abdomen and chest region. Now I've heard it a few times, I believe if you listen carefully, you can actually hear a crunch of the bones as thousands of pounds of pressure are going to be in this area. It will then grab your legs and completely rip you in half at about the mid lumbar region of the spine. Doom Slayer will look up and then I believe it will use its claws to basically slash in your face, completely killing you after that. Taking out a Baron of Hell is no easy task, but the glory kills are all going to involve you showing what you think of its fancy horns. The Doom Slayer will death from above it, climb on the Baron, and then grab the horn. You will then rip it out of its skull. These horns are basically going to be a piece of the skull itself, so it would likely expose brain, killing the demon quite quickly due to blood loss or even just pain. But it also might be the fact that the Doom Slayer literally hits the demon's brain with its own horn as a killing blow. Either way, ripping off the Baron's horns and beating them with a bloody end is going to be how it's going to meet its end. Overall, the Baron of Hell is one of the top ranking demons and sent in only to completely destroy any opposition. Their size and power would easily destroy tanks, weapons, soldiers, anything that humanity would throw at it just would not be enough. Which is probably why in Doom Eternal, we see that Earth is pretty much conquered and totally screwed. However, the Doom Slayer is more powerful than any human made weapon and is going to literally just be too angry to die. So that about wraps up this video on the Baron of Hell. Thank you guys for watching my video. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you are new here and enjoyed it enough, why not consider subscribing to stay up to date with the channel? And for those that have stayed watching, I appreciate you sticking around. If you liked the video, then please give it a like as really every like does thoroughly help the video. I will put my Twitter and Discord link in the description. So the lab has been busy the last few weeks, so I am not on Discord as much, but things seem to be calming back down. I love science, but good lord, there has been a lot to do. Anyways, before I begin rambling on that, I will also drop my Patreon link in the description as well, and I would like to thank my patrons. At the scientist tier, we have Layla Elizarin, and then we have Bowen Goodwin. Our two residents are going to be Richard Muhlenberg and Evan Osborne. Holding their PhD in genetics, we have A. Laurentis, Andrew Lawson, Divine Whisper, John Russo, Laffy No Skill, and Steve N. With their master's biology, we have Adam Hartswick, Brian H. Briggs, Cameron Smith, Javier D. Rodriguez, Scott Grant, and the Otter Man. And last but not least, with their Bachelor's of Morphological Sciences, we have Ahigao Comics, Alex the Gun Guy, Average Soul, Dustin Ellis, Eric Scott Gillies, Jims, Joseph Radical, Professor Binups, and Zachary Baker. Thank you guys for your support. Also, patrons, I know I have totally been slacking on game night, but I swear, I have time coming up soon, so I will get something organized, probably around Thanksgiving. So just kind of be on the lookout for that. I'll make a post about it. Anyhow, thank you guys for watching, and I will see y'all in the next one.